Thank you for joining Let's Meet Where We Eat, conversations with innovation and entrepreneurship leaders who specialize in food and nutrition. Our series is presented by Nourish Cafe and the Food and Nutrition Innovation Institute at the Tufts Friedman School for Nutrition Science and Policy. Enjoy. We're joined today by Dr. Beatrice Abiero, Head of Policy Research at Instacart. Dr. Beatrice Abiero is a demographer and health services researcher with more than 10 years of experience. She is passionate about researching health and food access and prides herself on being a creative and results-oriented thought leader. At Instacart, Dr. Abiero is head of policy research where she manages external research partnerships, leads large-scale research studies, and engages in coalition building for Instacart's policy and government affairs team. Dr. Abiero leverages her extensive experience in social science research to provide actionable insights that inform Instacart's policy and business development, ballot initiatives, and strategic priorities. Prior to joining Instacart, Dr. Abiero led large-scale analyses and reports as key analytics manager for a $31.8 million patient experience and satisfaction survey program to inform military health system stakeholders on how to improve care for 4.5 million beneficiaries. Her research resulted in four peer-reviewed publications and numerous high-profile reports that provided military surgeon generals and C-suite health executives with strategies to enhance quality care and patient experience. Dr. Abiero earned a dual-title PhD in health policy and administration in demography from Penn State. She enjoys collecting books with the best intentions of reading them, Netflix marathons, and mentoring youth. So we're so lucky to have you here today. You have a wealth of experience in areas that I know we're all really passionate about. Um, So to kick off the questions, I'm just gonna ask two before we open up to the floor. Um, The first one being, could you touch upon your experience in research um, in industry versus in academia? Absolutely, and I'm really glad to be here. I'm very honored and so thank you so much for connecting with me and having me here. Uh, For me, I would love to talk about research in academia and how it is different for industry, especially for those who are considering a research track in your career. Uh, For me, I've observed that there's three main differences uh, between research and academia and industry. The one, the first one being ownership in terms of who owns the research. Um, So as a PhD student, you're trained to become a researcher for the academy and think about a question that um, really emphasizes depth versus breadth. So how can you really get deeper into like climate change issues and how it impacts the way people are eating, um, sustainability issues, et cetera, at a very uh, comprehensive level. But from my observation, um, I knew right, I knew very early on that I didn't want to do research in academia because I felt like a lot of the conversations stay among a siloed group of people. It can be a little bit slower, um, take time. And then once you publish your article, it's locked behind a library access table. Um, so for me, I thought that going into industry would be would allow me the opportunity to inform research in a very timely, relevant way really emphasize policy recommendations um, that could be implemented, um, but the ownership changed in that way, in that the research is really driven by your clients if you're in a consultant position or by the business. Like for example, at Instacart where I am now, a lot of the research that we do is driven by business priorities, making sure that it connects straight back to our mission. And so um, that's what I mean by by ownership. And um, the second thing, is uh, the goals of the research. So, it, you know, when you have more autonomy, it's easier to ask different types of questions that you're interested in exploring versus, again, you know, from an industry perspective, beholden to whatever the research questions are that um, are really key, maybe sometimes from a top down uh, approach for the company. Um, but that could be a good thing. So, if you have a limited menu of, you know, these are the priorities that we have. And you can't think creatively in terms of how can we come up with research that addresses these priorities. And then the way we communicate research is different. So the gold standard in academia tends to be publication, or something that goes within a conference proceeding, whereas an industry it could take many forms. It could be anything from a blog post, to a white paper, to a deck, um, a briefing. Uh, so you have to think about making sure that you can communicate your findings 
it really focused on storytelling in a way that's meaningful to various stakeholders. That took a lot of practice for me. I found that quite challenging initially because when I was writing up my results and stuff, I was like, okay, I got my table one, we got our demos and everything. But if I'm talking to a business development person or if I'm talking to my client, they're not going to be thinking, okay, like, let's get our table one of the poor survey sample is. What does this mean for waiting, whatever? They're going to want to know, okay, give me the bottom line. Like, what's the takeaway headline that could be used um, uh, for our mission, et cetera? So um, I had to really think about changing the style and how I wrote, um, understanding what perspective was really key for the given stakeholder. And then all, with, with that in mind, realizing that, like, I'm writing for multiple people. I could be writing for a policymaker, I could be writing for a journalist, um, but I can't just focus on the analyst in me and what their needs are when um, when my findings are being communicated. So those are the three main things is just really ownership from my perspective is ownership, um, the goals of the research, and then how the research is communicated. Awesome. Does anyone have any follow-up questions with that before I ask my second question? Specific to that? No? Cool. So the second question I had before we open up to the group is. So this is the entrepreneurship and innovation meetup. So how would you say that Instacart supports entrepreneurship and or innovation um, within your group, the, the organization, anything, yeah. any way you want? So Instacart, for those who may not know, is the leading um, grocery technology platform in North America. So we have coverage in the United States for more than 95% of households who are able to order groceries online. Um, more than 75,000 stores are part of our platform, and we provide services both in North America, both within the United States and Canada. And um, it's a game changer in terms of being able to improve food access for, for, for all kinds of people, um, but particularly for marginalized communities. And the way Instacart thinks about innovation, I think, is embedded in a couple ways. So the first is in our culture. So it's really encouraged to just think about, you know, if you have an idea, let's test it out. Let's try. And I find that really refreshing. Um, in some settings, depending on where you are, there could be a lot of bureaucracy in terms of, you know, you come up with an idea, it has to go through this approval process. We have approvals in place, we have a legal team for a reason. Um, but sometimes that could be very restrictive versus, you know, going up to my boss and saying, hey, I think we should do research on shoppers in this way. Okay, put together an RFP, put together the RFPs, gone through its necessary approvals, and before you know it, we're able to.